next item is the city of Hay Harbor cases, uh, agenda item number two. Actually, actually, agenda item number two and three will be discussed together, uh, but then we will make uh, separate motions uh, for those since it's uh, actually related to each other. So staff, if you would please present um, those agenda items for uh, the commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jason is switching our technology here to the file. say this is two separate requests uh, by the same applicants for the same property. Uh, we discussed these at length at the work session. Um, there are two separate requests because Georgia law requires separate action on an annexation and a rezoning. Um, they require action on the rezoning first and then the annexation. And I think for discussion purposes and perhaps even for public hearing purposes, we can go ahead and consider them as one item but when you actually get to voting on your recommendation to Hayhar City Council, I would suggest that you make separate motions and vote on them separately. Um, that being said, this is a table um, group of items from your meeting a month ago. Uh, at that time, it was announced that Hayhar City Council had canceled their May meeting. And the request was put forth by the applicant to a table for one month. And so here we are. We're back to looking at these items. This is an annexation rezoning request by Fred Weatherington and Lawrence Nelson to annex now approximately 58 acres um, into the city of Pehara. It is currently zoned EA, which stands for Estate Agricultural. Uh, that is the zoning in the county. They are requesting single family residential R10 zoning upon annexation. Um, as noted on the cover page, there has been some changes, although it's not shown on this map, nor on that one. This shows the original property as it was proposed um, over a month ago, as it was submitted with the annexation. It was a little bit larger acreage at that time, it was 66.1. Um, the county, in its review of the request during the latter parts of April, raised some concerns about possible access from this property onto North Hagen Bridge Road. Um, as you look in the northwest boundary of the property, that is North Hagen Bridge, it is a substandard unpaved road in Lowndes County. Um, it is not able to handle a lot of traffic. Given the acreage of this property, there's the potential for more than 100 dwelling units here. There was concern that access onto a dirt road would be a problem. Um, with that in mind, the applicants have since amended their request to shrink back the property from North Haken Bridge by a distance of 210 feet. And that map is shown in your packet as the revised survey. But it's the same property, just imagine a little sliver of land, but not so little at 210 feet um, being pulled back. And so it changes the acreage and reduces it down to 58, uh, excuse me, yeah, 58.09. Um, still requesting R10 zoning from EA. Character area map, the comprehensive plan on the future development map, uh, shows this area as agricultural forest. It is adjacent to the Hayhower city limits, which is suburban area. Um, aerial it is very indicative of the land use pattern. Once you leave the existing Hayhower city limits, you are out in the country. This is dominated by farming land, um, a few residences on larger lots, um, and that is the current use of the property. The applicants have indicated that even after annexation, they have no plans to develop the property immediately, um, to the point that they have even placed the larger of these parcels into conservation easement with the county tax assessors. Um, that locks the property up for 10 years without development unless they go through a penalty process. Um, there's been lots of discussion about water and sewer services. In the lower left of the property, you see the city limits and also the Edgewater subdivision. That is where you have existing Hayhira water and sewer service. There's been some concern raised by Hayhira staff that the water and sewer service in the immediate area um, is sort of maxed out in terms of its capacity. That's not capacity of the city system, but it's simply capacity of lift station and some of the piping that's associated with those services. Um, so in other words, to tie into that, it means some infrastructure upgrades would be necessary. Um, that is, like we talked about before, a development issue, more so than a rezoning or annexation issue. Regardless of how the property would be developed, even at any density, those are engineering issues that would have to be addressed. Um, 
The concern was access to North Hampton Bridge Road and staff's opinion that has been alleviated by the change in the property boundary. And by the way, like we talked about at the work session, that property boundary has been formalized in the form of a recorded subdivision plan that was recorded a week ago yesterday. So that is actually a revised parcel of land. Um, access by the other parcels and a small piece of the large property would come from Georgia Highway 122, where access is not a big issue. It's simply a permitting process to Georgia DOT. Um, subject property. On the lower left is the wooded side, which is what you see from Georgia 122. And then the upper right is a picture of North Haken Bridge Road down near the water or the Edgewater subdivision. Um, as you can see, it's a, a narrow dirt road that has no development on it to speak of. Um, adjacent properties show a mixture of agricultural land and some forest, and you see some of the scattered residences that are on the slightly smaller parcels. Um, there is no proposed layout for the subdivision, which is the applicant said they are simply wanting to annex it in for future development um, and obtain city water and sewer services. So we have no proposed layout to show you. The concern from staff is that of the zoning. If you look at the zoning map, you see Edgewater zoned R15. The nearest R10 is 3,000 feet to the west, down along the rest of Hagen Bridge Road. Um, and particularly since this is a speculative type rezoning request, um, staff is recommending R15 zoning instead of R10. <coughs> so it would match Edgewater subdivision. And then if at a later date, the owners of the property wanted to request R10 zoning based on some layout, to demonstrate what the R10 layout would look like, they can always request a rezoning at a later date. Um, but right now, staff's recommendation um, is to find a consistent with our comprehensive plan. I recommend approval of both the annexation and the rezoning, but to rezone to R15 instead. Um, in your packet, there are a number of things present. Um, there's the standards for exercise of zoning power, which pertain to the rezoning case. There is a letter of opposition from the landowner to the immediate south across Georgia 122. Um, and then handed out to you, actually emailed to you this afternoon, was another uh, three or four page letter of objection from another resident. Um, I've given a hard copy to Carmela to put in the meeting records. There was not enough time to run copies for all of you. Um, but that has been given to an email. And that person actually may be in attendance tonight. Uh, but they are raising general concern um, about high density residential development in this area and how it might impact infrastructure. Uh, particularly, they're concerned about the school system, which staff is not sure we understand that since the annexation would not change the school districts, uh, but unincorporated and they are served by Lyons County Schools. Um, perhaps it's the numbers that we're concerned about. Um, beyond that, set, um, packets are self-explanatory. Remember, there's two separate ones, uh, rezoning first, then annexation. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. All right, questions from the commissioner? Yeah, on the, uh, I know the uh, on the last Excuse me, your microphone's up. Did you get taken up? Can you get closer to that microphone? There you go. Hello? Hello? Not working. Yeah. I'll try and speak a little louder. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. we got an audience out here. Oh, okay. Hang on every word. All right. Um, my question is on, um, like the past four, five, six years, I know for a fact in any of the developments that we've dealt with, that's been several issues that come, well, issues that come up. Is the paving of the road that's involved with the uh, development? Uh, is the uh, applicant going to pave the road? Does it take part of Hagen Bridge Road? Well, their property does not have access to North Hagen Bridge Road, so I don't see why they would want to pave it. Um, they're not planning to use it. Um, but at least not without changing their property configuration and perhaps annexing some more property at a later date. Uh, but that's also a development concern. Uh, if the road remains in unincorporated Lowndes County, the county has control over access to that road, whether it be driveways or new streets. Um, a would have uh, 
um, say so over the layout of the subdivision itself. But to, add, but to access a road in another jurisdiction, you have to have consent from the other jurisdiction. What was the reason for going around? Is that not the that on that circle? I'm actually going to go North Asian group. Yeah. No, no, they are amending, they're shrinking their property so it no longer touches North Haven Bridge Road. Right? So any streets or lots within the proposed development at some point in the future would not touch North Haven Bridge Road right? and therefore the driveways, the roads would be out onto that road without coming through other unincorporated areas. So the entrance and access to the property would be on 2122? Right, the, the subject property touches 122, not Haven Bridge. And part of it too, and we talked about this only through the work session, there's a review process when you go through annexation, you have to notify Miles County um, of it, and if they've got time to review and raise concerns, they have actually formally objected to the annexation based primarily on access to Haven Bridge Road, and that is a response to the original package that we sent them in early April, which is this property that you see on the screen. Since that time, the property has been amended to shrink some of the acreage, um, staff's view, at least my staff's view, is that it's sufficient to alleviate most, if not all, of those concerns. The county thinks there's still some issues. Um, they are in the process of trying to negotiate an agreement between the county and the applicants over use of the property in terms of development standards. That is an ongoing process. It was on the county commission agenda this evening. My understanding, and Jason can clarify this, but they have not reached agreement on the agreement in terms of the language. So the county commission has tabled that item um, as far as consideration of the agreement. Um, but it's my opinion that such an agreement is completely parallel and outside the annexation rezoning case. There are no issues there that affect the rezoning of the property um, and generally how you need to annex or not. So I think from the planning commission standpoint, we can proceed and this negotiation that's ongoing between the county and the applicant can continue um, in its own separate course. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of discussion, even still, going on about access to this property. Um, all right, are there any other questions before the commission coming for the staff? Yes. They're not planning on de developing this property in the near future. That's what they told us. Okay. Uh, and looking at the problems that we have with the infrastructure in Hay High, is it premature to move into this until we've got those problems addressed? As there's, far as the sewer and right. uh, And there's two ways to look at that. Um, you can annex property and it can sit there even if water or sewer is readily available. There's nothing that requires a landowner to go ahead and to develop it. But if they want to develop the property, they have certain guidelines to follow, just as if the, if the property had been in the city limit for 30 years. So in this case, it's in staff's view, fine to annex the property. But in order to develop it at some later date, it's got to meet the standards for the development. And water and sewer would be one of them. Otherwise, you know, you could build one house there and you just deal with the infrastructure for that. Um, or leave it in the current use, which is agricultural. Um, and the flip side is the premature question is, well, then what is the purpose of annexing at this time right. if there are no plans to develop the property to utilize the city's water and sewer? Um, it has been done both ways, like we talked about the work session about Valdosta as an example. Annex very large tracts of land in the past that are still not developed, and some of them still do not have water and sewer service, but have been in the city limits for a while. Um, there's two different ways to look at it. Staff's opinion is there's no problem with annexing it now, but fully recognizing that the development issues are still there, regardless if you develop now or develop later.
Any other questions up there? There being none, I will now open the public participation portion. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of this application? Nelson, I live at 508 North Church Street, Hey Howard, Georgia. This piece of property is um, just outside the city limits, I think about 150 feet in one section. Taking Bridge Road is not even anything to discuss. It's out of the question. We have no we have no avenues of accessing that road for anything that would be zoned without the county's permission and that's all covered under the ULDC. So the agreement with the county and the landowner and the petitioner is something that, that's already handled for the ULDC. So from our perspective with the argument that's going on or the negotiation, we don't feel that it's right that we have to concede to more constraints that are already placed upon upon as far as that property coming back and forth with easement to Hagen Bridge Road. We've uh, accommodated them by taking and moving that boundary line back. That was an issue that the uh, county engineering had that they were going to leave a strip of land uh, exposed that the CDA hire would uh, have to take care of. Okay. We moved it back so there wouldn't encroach upon that to solve that problem. So Hagen Bridge, we can just get the dirt road on Hagen Bridge. We have no we have no problem with that. We don't have any ways of accessing that unimproved dirt road for a sudden did and that would never go through the county. So they would stop that. This property is far from being rural. It abuts the subdivision to the south to east. Uh, 3,000 feet, that sounds like a long way, but it's not. Uh, R10 and R15 are very compatible with each other. Uh, doesn't mean that you have to build a bigger house or a smaller house. Neither one of those two zoning depends on what size house you build. It gives the latitude to the landowner, though, to make it a lot bigger or smaller, a minimum being 10,000 square feet or up to a half acre. Subdivision I'm building in now has three lots in it that's a half acre. One is over a half acre and it's R10. Just makes it more easier for the landowner when it comes to time, when the time gets there to develop that property, that he has the latitude to move, uh, to circumvent his property easier than being locked into R15. The, uh, some of the stuff Matt brought up that he was uh, that he was referring to on his uh, reason he wants to stay with R15 uh, is the uh, water and sewer infrastructure. Well, that water and sewer infrastructure has to be fixed whether we put a subdivision in or don't. I'm the one that took the uh, files down and had it put into a conservation easement. So I know it's been taken in. Mr. Fred, he's gone. He has no plans for this in the future. Uh, but at one time, uh, one day he will, 20 years from now he might, and I think that he has the right to get the highest and best use of his land when he does. Hey, Howard has a tax base problem right now, so we're not generating enough money to fix the sewer. These sewers are undersized, and they have I&I &I problems. And we have problems now without any kind of development going on. They're existing right now as we speak. So there's nothing that has anything to do with the development, part of developing this property. Those items need to be addressed now, which they are addressing those. We have about uh, 35, 40 people in Hay Howard that work on our project. From the cabinet shop, insulation, garage fuel people, painters. I mean, they all live in Hay Howard. And that's where these properties need to be. 
develop just where they work, where they live. And uh, I don't see an issue with with granting R10, especially with the time frame we're talking in building this out. In 10 years, we might not even have a R10 or R15. I see it all being planned development this time. Um, we've got to stop squandering our land. We've got to stop wasting it. We have to get more precise of what we're doing instead of just putting big lots on everything. You look at the map, that's far from being rural. The water and sewer is less than 150 feet on it. On the front, on 122, that's where we'd be accessing that property from. There's no other there's no other way to access it unless we would bring that other one in under another uh, zoning. We have no plan to do that. Mr. Weatherman has no plan to do that. This is all based on a 10-year easement. And, and then backing that up with another 10. Fred will be farming for 20 more years. I believe him. He's an honest man, and that's what he's told me, and that's what I stand on. Um, and there's no uh, infrastructure. It's not going. A couple of things I do want to, I do want to point out, though. Um, he said some of the things in Matt's packet that I had a chance to read addressed uh, is it going to impose an impact problem? Not right now. Maybe on an eight or ten year build out, it might. But as it, everything else is going to grow with it, and we need those tax bases. The millage rates for hay hire, so we can have the money to improve. The county needs it. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't. I think it would be a it would be a shame if we didn't give this man the highest and best use of his land, especially with it being set aside so many years. I know Mr. Rector might be for that. He builds up in our 10 subdivisions right now against him. I know Mr. Hall, he, uh, he probably uh, told me that uh, he didn't want them to fall out. Of it. Well, that's sending a message saying, we don't want your sons, we don't want your daughters, we don't want your uh, people that are coming up in the air. We don't want you to stay there. We want you to move on. So I've got to be big out. I heard uh, Mr. Hall's speech on the broadband. Maybe they were going to pay for that broadband. Come from the tax base. Can't everybody be on a half acre or a two acre lot or a five acre lot? We need these tax bases for the future. When the seed data harvest becomes related, we don't have that with dying and make our. We're already closed off to the west, practically closed off to the north. Nothing's bringing in on the south. Only thing we got. Moody Air Force Station. There's only two tracks out there. Thank you. Any questions for me? Any questions for the speaker from the commissioner? All right, thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? All right, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? It's uh, Troy Davis. I'm on uh, 5998 Coppage Road, Hey Hira. Uh, I'm the gentleman that actually sent concerning the school systems because that is what my career has actually been in the last uh, 30 years I'm retired. Uh, I will answer that question if that's okay. Uh, the impact on the school district is that if you build, and I've heard anywhere from 400 to 600 and whatever in between houses, on 58 acres that it shifts the population population in the school district unless all of those are brand new residents and so when you do that you have a redistribution issue so at that point whenever that point is someone somebody's children who have moved to Hayhira with the idea that their children will be going to Hayhira Elementary or Hayhira Middle School will not go to Hayhira Elementary or Hayhira Middle School where this property is located, my question is whose children are moving? That's my question. But um, that, that kind of explains where I am there. But I do want to talk about this sheet, which is the city of Hayhira's standard government excise of zoning power. Um, this property does not meet C, E, F, or G. Uh, Mr. Nelson spoke to uh, 20 years 
Mr. Weddington, who is my neighbor across the street, neighbor on the top of the road, is going to farm for 20 years. We mentioned that subcontractors need work. Well, they don't need work 20 years from now. They need existing subcontractors need work today. Uh, taxing base for Hay Hira. If this development is not going to take place for 10 years, then the only taxes that will change would be the city tax on 58 acres of, with no houses on it. So if the city of Ohio was looking to increase their tax base, they need to annex property that has houses. Valdosta has exercised this model many years. Nine years ago, eight years ago, the islands were annexed in Valdosta as for an example. So if, if that is the purpose of Hay Hira, to generate revenue, they need to generate revenue from existing built houses. Uh, I'll be glad for them to come and provide me with uh, water and sewer at my house because I get tired of finding a septic tank and wait. Um, might, maybe, one day, by definition, are all premature. This may happen, may not happen one day. I am not opposed to development. I am not opposed to developing our community. I am opposed to changing the scope of our community to the point that we are living on might, maybe one day, 10 years, 20 years. We, our, our children do not need us obligating them for 20 years down the road now. Let them make the decision. I dare to say that not any of you or myself will be on this board in 20 years. There are soybeans planted right there, right now. I don't know what's in those other blue areas, but are they agriculture? Does EA mean agriculture? I'm a real novice here, not the smartest one in the room. So is that agriculture down here that we're not talking about with EA on it? Mine's the EA. So if I build a hog facility or decided to go talk to the gentleman that owns the EA or the young, young lady and I want to put chicken houses, can I do it? Premature. It's premature. Even to R15 or whatever we're talking about, I don't understand that. But, uh, but, but I, I mean, why? Why go to go from EA to R whatever? Just wait until we're ready and we have a business plan. We know how we're going to finance it and how we're going to help the city pay for the, the sewer and water infrastructure. I.e. Stone Creek. Who provides water for Stone Creek? Is that, I mean, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to developing our community. I, I actually married into this community, but I've lived within 45 miles of this community all my life. My, my dad spent 37 years on North Fort Southern Railway. You don't know where that's at. Driving back to from Pearson, Georgia. I'm just saying that, that there's a lot of my ifs, maybes that doesn't make any sense to them. And why do we need to do this now? And if the city of Hay Hira needs annexation for tax purposes, then they need to look at another piece of property. They need to look somewhere where there already is existing homes in order that can pay additional tax. <coughs> yeah. Any questions of me? I'll take the whole 10 minutes up. Right. Any questions from the commissioners? Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of I mean, uh, in opposition to this request? In opposition to this request. I'm Don Adams. I live at 611 Hyper Street in Hay Hara, about a quarter of a mile from this proposed annexation. I'm opposed to it because of several reasons. One, it 
if it were to be developed, the city had hired no position to handle it, sewer wise. I lived in Hay for 26 years. For 26 years, Hay Hire has had a sewer problem. On the 18th of March, when we had the heavy rain, there was three manholes in the city, two of them about a quarter of a mile of my house, that were still in sewer into the street. At a daycare center, the largest one in the center, the little children that afternoon were having to wade through human waste to get to their cars to go home with their mom's legs. And there's been no plan put forth as to why this is going to become a real if, if we knew what was going to happen, we might not be opposed. If the developer says we're going to come in and we're going to rebuild the sewer system so it'll take care of the sewer from this and we're going to build 50 houses out here and this is what they're going to look like and the streets are going to be in this configuration. But we haven't heard that. We don't know. We do hear rumors. This is a plan to, to annex in a no piece property. That's what we hear. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't seen any. It tells me that that's what, what's going to happen. But I see no reason to annex this property into the city to increase the tax rates if it's not going to be developed. If there's not a plan put forward to show us what's going to be done, we can't. We as citizens can't be in favor. Thank you. All right. Any questions for the speaker? All right, thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Thank you. 
on that back part over there where you're talking about putting some to do, they get the canal out of another one to drain it. They run the hill that can come north out of the zip pond up there toward the foot down, coming across there. It's all that built on it. And I own them right there. I got 200 and something like that. And I had a farmer come by. Those weeks we want to buy everything I had. Uh, uh, it's fine, and I don't want to be shoved out of it, and, that, and I, I want to be white, so it's what's right, and I think all my neighbors are sick. That's it. Okay. Are there any questions for the speaker? Uh, thank you. We have time for one more uh, person that they want to come to speak in opposition to this request. All right, there being nobody else, the... My name is Barbara Stratton. I live at 6233 Justin V. Cannon Street in Nightara. And I just am a little bit confused because I don't see the owner of the property here at this meeting. He wasn't here last time. And I don't see any city council members or the mayor of the city of Tahara, so I'm a little bit confused, but that's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is me. Okay. Deep quiet. But nobody's speaking for it, and I just, I, maybe it's not unusual for an individual to, to be asking for an exception instead of the city. But I'm just confused. <laughs> Are there any questions for the speaker? All right, Brandon, thank you. Um, discussion is now open amongst the commissioners. I think uh, this is, again, like I said before, this is premature. If we were looking to develop this property,